It's Christmas Eve, and while the Nakatomi Corporation celebrates its most successful year, some uninvited guests arrive downstairs. Twelve terrorists with a meticulous and cold-blooded plan for the greatest robbery in history are about to seize this L.A. high-rise. This is one party John McClane will never forget. Bruce Willis stars in the new 20th Century Fox action-adventure, Die Hard. Willis portrays a New York City cop who becomes the only hope for his estranged wife and 30 others who are held captive. John McClane is simply an ordinary guy who is thrown into extraordinary circumstances. He's not some super cop, some indestructible, unfeeling, unemotional guy. He's a guy who, who, uh, who, who cares for his wife. He cares about his own life. He cares about staying alive. It's the police. You won't hurt me. Oh, yeah? Why not? Because you're a policeman. There are rules for policemen. Yeah. That's what my captain keeps telling me. This could have very easily become a very heavy, kill everybody, blood and guts, bullets flying everywhere film. But uh, when your life is on the line, you could die at any moment. A, a very strange sense of humor comes out, and uh, from the research that I did, and you know, you know, talking to the you know the various officers and detectives who helped us on this, they helped me a lot, you know, to find that, to find that, that kind of black humor. As if you are a mysterious party crasher, you are most troublesome for a security guard. E Sorry, Hans, wrong guess. Would you like to go for double jeopardy where the scores can really change? You really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? I have a request. What idiot put you in charge? You did, when you murdered my boss. Bonnie Bedelia plays Willis's wife, Holly. An English stage actor, Alan Rickman, stars as the diabolical terrorist leader, Hans Gruber. She's the leader, sort of, of the group of hostages through most of the movie. So I think when you have 50 people looking to you, and you're who they're looking to, it kind of in itself might force you to become a little stronger and a little less of just a bundle of raw nerve tissue. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not playing the villain. I'm just playing somebody who wants certain things uh, in life, has made certain choices, uh, and goes after them. <laughs> His hot-headed right-hand man, Carl, is played by Alexander Gudinov. I like the idea of playing bad guy. It's an action movie, which I haven't done before. And it's very interesting and it's very dif different, and you learn a lot. I hear you, partner. L.A.'s finest are on it. So light him if you got him. McLean's only real support comes from another cop, played by Reginald Vell Johnson. The man is hurting. He is alone tired, and he hasn't seen diddly squat from anybody down here. Now, you're going to stand there and tell me that he's going to give a damn about what you do to him if he makes it out of there alive? He's lost faith in the system, and the system has made him lose faith in himself, I guess you would say. And McLean helps him get that faith back so he can become the man that he wants to be. It was a physically exhausting film. I did most of my own stunts in this. I really trained hard for this film and got in good shape. I really wanted to do a lot of my own stunts because I think that always lends a lot of, you know, lends a lot of production value to, to the, you know, the picture. And it was a lot of fun. Besides breathtaking stunts, Die Hard also calls for spectacular visual effects. He's doing it, but he's not really doing it, which gets you more pissed off. One of director John McTiernan's greatest challenges was to find a real building where his production team could shoot guns and set off explosions. 
He found that building in the newly built Fox Plaza. So you take this under advisement, jerkweed. Filming in the midst of a busy residential and business district created production difficulties, particularly for special effects coordinator Al DeSaro, who worked with producers Lawrence Gordon and Joel Silver on Predator. Boom, boom, boom. I can tell you what the challenge is for me on this film. It's shooting in this building. I've made some calls to some, some effects people that I've worked with in the years just to find out, hey guys, have you ever blown up a floor on a real building? Well, yeah, we've done that before. A 35-story high-rise, like the Fox Plaza, and all I get is this wide-eyed look from them, like, mm, mm we haven't done that. We have to periodically run downstairs and apologize to the lawyer beneath us, saying, we're about to fire machine guns. <laughs> Will you excuse us? What we got happening is our terrorist on the second floor has just seen this armored car come crashing through the rail. So he's got his, his rocket launcher set up. Ready, come in. He fires a rocket down and to disable it. And everything is blowing up underneath. All right? The last detonation will be as if the gas tank has exploded in this, which is totally disabling the vehicle, washing gas out into the street. It sounds good, doesn't it? 